you could write this as for each p as um, uh, OLE DB is it command? I wonder if it's OLE DB parameter. Oh, there you go. OLE DB parameter in dbcmd dot parameters. Okay, so that. Oh, I'm sorry. We wanted the. We want to loop through the list. <laughs> Got go in the wrong direction here. So, essentially, this is how you would do it. If if you didn't want to do a one line lambda here, then you just say uh, same thing we said before. dbcmd dot parameters dot add. And it would accept that, but instead we condense that down into a single line. That's just a very simplistic expression. Um, so once we've added our parameters in um, from our list, we then want to purge that list. So uh, next time we run a query, it doesn't have the same old parameters that we used before. Uh, then we can get errors if we don't do this. So uh, next thing we need to do is clear params list and um, to do that is very simple to purge a list you just say params dot clear boom all the records are gone from that and next up uh, finally actually we're going to execute our command and fill our data set so execute command and fill our data set okay I guess in this case it's a data table. So we need to create a new data table first. We're going to say db um, db data table equals a new data table. And then I'm going to use my data adapter. I'm going to say db da equals new OLE DB data adapter. Remember, this is where the action occurs. And I'm going to execute the DB command with that uh, data adapter. Okay. And once I do that, then whatever was piped into here, it could be a select expression or an update command or anything else, it gets executed at this point. Um, and then we can use the records uh, to fill let's say record count equals db data adapter dot fill and what do we want to fill we want to fill up our data table so we're going to say db dt and once we do that all of our query results are loaded into this data table and they are ready then to output onto our form okay so that is what's occurring there as soon as you hit the fill it pipes that data into our data table <clears throat> and really that is it next step we want to capture any errors so we're just gonna say exception equals ex dot message okay that's very easy and once you're done doing all of your work um, because I like to work in offline mode as opposed to online mode um, you probably want to close your connection to the database and that leaves it available for others if you're in a multi-user environment um, should unlock any records that you had locked and whatnot so close your connection it's always a good idea you don't want to leave your database uh, connection open it can cause problems so we're gonna say if the database connection state is open then dbcon dot close always close the door on your way out and that's it we are ready to execute queries and the beauty is once you've created this you can reuse it uh, for any number of databases or um, you know it's it's really nice 
portable and reusable code. Uh, there's one last thing that we need to do here, and that is to um, manage our parameters list, okay? Uh, right here we're using our parameters list and we're clearing it, but we don't have a way to actually add parameters in that very simply. So um, here we'll say include um, query and command parameters. Okay, so we're just going to create a very simple little sub here. We like simple, right? Add param, and we have to supply two values here. We have to give it a name as a string and the value. And the value needs to be more nebulous than just a string. The value needs to be an object, um, which means it can really be any data type. Uh, when you're passing different values into your database, sometimes you've got um, strict controls on uh, what goes into what fields? Is it a Boolean value? Is it a, a string, an integer, or any other type of uh, data? So this needs to be very flexible. So we can add any type of data to our, you know, as a parameter for uh, working with the database. So here I'm just going to create a quick variable. I'm going to say um, new um, param as a new OLEDB parameter. And we are going to provide a name from the name and the value. <clears throat> and when we're done, we're going to add it to our list. So we'll say params, that's our list, dot add our new parameter. And then it's done. So this class is, is absolutely complete now. And uh, if we can find our database, it might, I'm not sure, I haven't actually copied it to the, ran a build on it. To, I probably need to do that before I actually run this, or it might throw an error at me. It might try accessing the data. Of course, I'm not actually calling my class yet, so. <laughs> um, but the class is ready to be called. So now we can begin the part where we actually connect to the database and start doing some queries. So let's just run a quick query uh, when the form starts up. You can select your form and press F7 or double click on it. Um, I want the form one event, so I'm gonna grab that because I wanna find the form shown event. Um, this is better than using the form load event. Uh, form load event kind of, I don't know, some things execute before the form has fully initialized and you know you can get different errors and sometimes it suppresses errors that you should see so I prefer to use the shown event in place of that. Um, all we need here to access our new fancy uh, DB control class is a variable up here so I'm going to use a private and I'm just going to call this one access as new db control. Wow, that was hard. <laughs> okay, so uh, from here we can run a query. And uh, let's just test this out first, see if it's going to blow up on us for not actually copying our database into our directory yet. I'm just going to say access dot execute query. And I'm going to do a very simple query here. I'm just going to say select star from members. Okay. Wow. Ultra simple query. Uh, this selects all values, all records. Not a good idea in a live environment uh, for performance reason. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Well, it didn't explode. So this executed properly with no errors. At least I think there was no errors. We didn't actually check form. Um, what we can do is we can say if string dot is null or empty 
actually we want to see if it's not empty if there's nothing if there's nothing in the exception well, where was that in our DB control class if there's nothing in the exception that means it executed successfully okay doesn't necessarily mean that any records will be returned but it did execute without errors so if not string is null or empty it means the exact opposite of that it means that uh, there is something in there there is an error that was detected so we'll say then message us and tell us what the error is so we'll say access dot exception will be our message and I'm just gonna tack on a little one line just to keep this nice and small whoops I forgot to actually specify the string that I want to check here Access dot exception helps if I can type. All right, so I'm checking this string to see if it's null or empty. If it is empty, um, good. If it's not empty, bad. Okay. If we get an error, we don't want to keep trying to execute more code on our um, broken data source. So we're just gonna exit out of the sub. So let's run this. See if we get an error no errors that's a very good sign all right let's force an error into this um, let's see our table name is members I'm gonna say members X so I'm gonna try selecting data from a table that doesn't exist boom didn't like that okay so Microsoft Access Database Engine cannot find the input table or query members X all right so we know that our query exceptions are working properly and you notice it didn't crash our application that's because we use the try catch uh, you, most of you are probably already familiar with the try catch statements but that's kind of how that happened how that works so you can handle those errors gracefully and then just exit out and uh, you know discontinue running any code against it so let's take this a step further let's uh, you know some of you would like to know how do you get the data from the database into the data grid view? Well, this is surprisingly simple. Um, all you have to do is um, fill the data grid. <laughs> uh, we're, what we're going to do is set the data grid's uh, data source property to be equal to the uh, database data table that we filled with our data adapter in our uh, DB control so this guy right here after this fills it um, the data gets pumped into this table and from there it can be piped out into this data grid view very simply so just gonna say DGV data that's what we named it dot data source equals access dot DB data table. Let's try executing this now. Whoop! I forgot to fix my table. <laughs> hey, look at that! We can see all of our data. Well, that concludes this tutorial. All right, just kidding. There's more. <laughs> Let's have some more fun with this. Um, that's pretty much how you access your data. I mean, you, you could uh, quit watching at this point if you want, uh, but I recommend sticking around and, you know, enjoying the show. <laughs> so um, what if we want to fill, that, fill up that combo box with um, first names or the usernames? You know, we want to create a dynamic query or just ha create a cool list of, of just usernames and put it into this uh, drop down. Um, what we can do is we can uh, fill the combo box by saying for each, I wish I could use a lambda here, I can't without creating my own uh, extension method on the data, the rows. So for each R as data, whoops, that's got to be a data row in access dot 
data table dot rows. We'll say CBX users, that's our combo box, dot items dot add R being our data row and the name of the column that we want to add. Uh, in this case it's going to be the username so we put that in quotes just like that. Now look, we have successfully pulled in all of our users um, and we could complicate this query a little bit too. Uh, you know, we could say, I only want to see active members. Um, or, you know, you want a specific user ID or something like that. Uh, or you just want to sort it. You could filter this, you could sort the query. Um, right now they're not alphabetically arranged. Uh, so we could come up here and say, order by username. You could even throw in an ascending value. Run that and now they're in alphabetical order. Both lists are because they're both pulling from the same data set. You could also reverse that. Now it's going top down. Awesome. Okay. So now what to do? Um, one thing I do like to do, I'm going to set this back to an ascending sort order. Um, you notice that this starts up and you know it doesn't show, we don't really have any indication that uh, this list was populated. So what if I want to grab the very first value that it found in the event that it did find some values? Um, this is uh, pretty easy to do. We don't want to go in our for each loop. We want to come down here and say display first <clears throat> name found and I'll say if access dot record count is greater than zero and the reason I'm doing this is if we try setting the index value on the combo box when there are no items in it um, it's not going to be happy because it's like an array and you try calling something from an array that doesn't exist it's going to crash on you so we want there to at least be one record in there before we attempt to do this then combo sorry I got cut off there combo box users dot selected index equals zero and that should give us some indication that data was found see grab the first username it found popped it into that value uh, you could run all sorts of other things you could um, do a selected index change event to you know when you select a person it will fill you know text boxes with that specific users information and I may actually do that in uh, an upcoming tutorial for um, creating dynamic uh, searches which would be really cool. In this uh, tutorial I intend to do a very basic wildcard search uh, based on the username so there's still more to come here. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get started with that.